journey. It moves from an idea through that journey to a destination which creates value from the idea. And we've looked at a number of stages for that model and we've also looked at a number of the influences and at the importance of learning and building capability for next time. In other words, we have a model for managing innovation. Now, of course, it's a massive simplification. It isn't as simple as that in real life, but it helps us. It gives us a map for that journey. But we have to remember, innovation models matter. Basically, how we think about something is going to shape what we do about it. So what goes on in our head when we hear that word innovation shapes what we pay attention to, what we give resources to, what we manage. So it's important to check out the kind of model we're working with. And one of the challenges we find in managing innovation is the idea of partial models. For example, we can think of innovation as involving ideas. Bing! Idea equals innovation. No. We know that there's more to it than that. It's not to say that ideas are wrong. We need them at the start, but it's not enough. It's a very poor guide to managing the whole innovation journey. It's like a jigsaw puzzle with only one piece. We can't really see what the picture is supposed to be. So what we really need to do is to put together a number of pieces so we get a sense of the real picture and we can use that to guide our innovation management. So let's look at a few other partial models, pieces of the puzzle which are useful but on their own not sufficient. For example, there's something called knowledge push. We'll come back to this in a later module. But basically, why we do research, why we do all this research and development right around the world in the public and the private sector, isn't for fun. It's to create new knowledge, which creates new opportunities. And that's a model which creates a kind of push, an energy for innovation. The danger is we simply think sometimes that that's all there is to it. But actually, pushing all those things, creating the opportunities, doesn't work if people at the other end don't want the things that we're creating. Similarly, we could listen to the market, hear the voice of the customer, and let that pull the innovation through. That's again a good principle, except what happens if people don't know what they want? Henry Ford very famously said, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have told me, faster horses. Sometimes people don't know what they want. Steve Jobs famously said, people don't know it. But when they've got that gadget in their hands, they'll wonder how on earth they lived without it. Think about the smartphone and what happened with Apple in terms of changing the game. Basically, that's an example where simply believing in market-led innovation wouldn't have been sufficient. So there are two really important pieces of the puzzle, but on their own, there may be insufficient guides to how innovation happens. Put them together, and we've got a much more robust view of how to organize and manage our innovation journey. Let's look at a few others. Innovations about high technology. Well, yes, of course, technology enables all sorts of things. But the reality is a great deal of innovation doesn't involve gadgets. Computers, software, clever things. Actually, a great deal of innovation, especially in social and in service innovation, is about people and the way they interact. And so we've got a great deal of innovation that we could manage, but if our model says it's just about technology, what are we missing out on? Innovation's about radical change. Well, sometimes, but as we've seen, innovation actually takes place along a spectrum. From simple, incremental, do what we do better, right through to radical, do different kind of innovation. If we only focus on this, what are we missing out of in the more incremental end of that spectrum? Innovations about star turns. Well, yes, most organizations have some specialists, people who have the innovation badge. They're the ones responsible for making innovation happen. Research and development, new business development, this kind of thing. But actually, everybody is creative. Every human being could contribute to the innovation story. The question is, do we engage all of them in making innovation happen, or just some specialists? Innovation is just about products, about the things we offer the world. Well, as we've already seen, that's not true. Of course, there's a great deal we can do on that direction, but there are many other ways in which we can innovate. In our processes, in our market positioning, 
in our underlying business models. So what are we missing out of if our piece of the puzzle, our jigsaw puzzle piece, only says focus on the product offering? It's all about manufacturing. Well, in the old days, when we first started to look at innovation, that was probably true. But these days, a great deal, perhaps most innovation takes place in services. And so thinking about innovation as something that happens right across the piece, rather than just narrowly in manufacturing, will enrich our models again. And innovation taking place just within our world, one of the things we're learning as we see this as a multiplayer game is just how much experience lives outside of our direct experience, outside of our sector, outside of our marketplace. And we can learn from that and work with that. So these are a few examples. The idea is what we want to do with innovation is build a rich picture, put lots of pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together so that we have a strong, robust model to help guide our actions to models that help us manage innovation. Now, if we have only partial models, we quickly run into trouble. If we think innovation is just about having strong research, well, that will be good, but the risk we run is that technology, all that knowledge that we create, may not meet user needs. If we think it's just about specialists, then we're lacking the involvement of many others and the contribution that they could make to innovation. If we think it is just about the marketplace, listening to the voice of the customer, then we run the risk of never moving the frontier forward or being upstaged by somebody who does. Equally, if we think it's just about pushing the technical frontier, we may well be missing an opportunity. We may also find we overshoot the market. We create things that the market doesn't want. They're too complex. They go beyond what we need. And if we think innovation is only about large organizations, so small firms shouldn't bother, two problems. First of all, it means that small firms are missing out on a great opportunity. And secondly, the small firms that are around will tend to be rather weak, depending all the time for their future, for their survival, on the will of other larger organizations. So problems come very quickly when we work with partial models of innovation, even if we actually commit ourselves to innovation. This is a problem for organizations. It's also a big problem for startups. Again, innovation is a good idea. Well, yes, we need the good idea, but as we've seen, an idea on its own isn't a very good way to start an organization. Innovation is a solo act. Well, it needs a passionate, inspired individual to get things going. But as we've seen, innovation is hugely about networks, especially at the startup level. Innovation is all about technical success. Well, yes, solving a lot of technical problems is a key part of that startup, but it's not about that alone. It's also about marketplaces, about meeting and understanding user needs and working with them to refine the innovation. It's just about getting the innovation to launch. Well, yes, that's a hugely important short-term target, finally getting to the stage where we can launch, but that's just the first step. What we then have to do is build the thing to scale, to actually spread and diffuse our innovation. And innovation is just about a single product or service, creating the one thing. No, no, it's not a one-hit wonder, it's a serial process. Modifying, extending, developing that offering, adding new ones, moving into changing our processes, moving our market positions, it's a growing story. So once again, the risk at the startup level of only having a few pieces of the jigsaw puzzle means that we might fail to manage innovation effectively. We need rich, robust models. Innovation, as we've seen, is a journey, and that journey helps us think about innovation and how we manage it. Essentially, it's a model. Models matter because they shape what we pay attention to and what we manage. And there's a risk if the model we work with is only partial if it's one or two small pieces of the jigsaw puzzle rather than a rich picture. But we also need to recognize that we're learning to update and extend our models over time. What we therefore need is the capacity to reflect and update our models, what we call dynamic capability. <laughs>